Hello, welcome again to another session of Digital Slide Review Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hostel. Our program, a uh, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy from the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. I'm coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, home of the uh, Stevenson Oklahoma Cancer Center, an NCI designated cancer center. And our case today is one of those uncommonly encountered GI cases. A 30-year-old patient who is now uh, about six weeks post uh, bone marrow transplant for myeloid leukemia. He's presented with some additional epigastric pain and a little bit of blood in his stool. So upper endoscopy is performed. And uh, as we see and look at this biopsy, we see fairly healthy looking uh, uh, stomach, antrum here with a, a moderate degree of foveolar kind of hyperplasia, maybe uh, a little bit of corkscrewing and so forth. Uh, and looking, uh, we don't see any ulceration at low magnification. Uh, we do see that we have uh, no evidence of intestinal metaplasia. We don't have chronic inflammatory cells. Of course, this patient's a bone marrow transplant patient and may be uh, uh, somewhat immunocompromised, so we may not get a normal inflammatory response. So we'll want to look around and see what we can see here. And these foveolar cells look quite uh, uh, striking. Uh, fairly uh, ample amounts of mucin. But at this magnification, I think you can start to see maybe there's a couple of clues down here uh, in the deeper um, uh, antral type glands. And we can see there's some maybe some differences in some of these cells. So we'll go down and take a quick look at these. And sure enough, uh, what we're seeing here are very striking uh, eosinophilic nuclear inclusions uh, in these enlarged uh, cells. Uh, and they have, in addition, you can see very nicely here, um, a granular sort of purplish cytoplasmic inclusion. So multiple epithelial cells infected with what looks like cytomegalovirus. So this is one characteristic pattern of CMV infection. Uh, and oftentimes when we find it in a pattern like this, it's not just localized infection. Here's another one over here. Um, it's a systemic infection. So uh, usually we don't encounter CMV gastritis unless the patient has some underlying immunosuppression, either due to HIV AIDS, bone marrow transplant, or other chemotherapy or other immune compromising disease. These prominent nuclear inclusions can be seen on H&E. And if you're lucky, you can see granular cytoplasmic purple inclusions as well. But in addition to the epithelial cells that we saw infected in that first slide, you can also see infected endothelial cells and sometimes even stromal cells that may be infected. And in fact, if you do immunohistochemistry directed at uh, HCV, you'll often identify uh, several additional infected cells beyond those that you could detect uh, with uh, traditional h &E. The important thing that I find is to remember is that finding HCV should not be the end of the journey. You need to ask yourself the question, is there something else here? Does this patient have graft versus host disease? Is there Kappa C sarcoma? Is there some other uh, occult infection that's traveling along with the CMV? Um, and that's an important consideration. So let's take a quick look uh, oops, I think we missed the uh, a quick look at a couple of other uh, uh, slides. Uh, here's another example of a gastric biopsy, not from our patient, but it could have been our patient. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, there's more uh, inflammatory or more scarring going on here. In addition, we've got some atrophic gastritis manifest by the intestinal metaplasia. Um, and this case illustrates uh, one of the things that uh, I think is important. Here we see these stromal cells here. Um, and uh, one of the things that is important to remember is that it, you may not see the cells on every cut. Uh, and so you want to make sure that you look um, at each of the cuts to evaluate whether or not you've got uh, something going on. And since high magnification is often required to identify HCV, uh, that sometimes can be a little bit tedious. So we don't see any in this cut. We'll go back out here and go over to a different cut here. 
on a different level, take a look here and see if we can find some here. So looking in here, um, nothing particularly in there, maybe right down here. Uh, no definite inclusions in that particular area. Go over to the adjacent piece here and see if we can see things a little bit better. And here you can see a couple of things right up here in the stroma. So this illustrates the fact that these stromal cells, and these do not look really quite like <clears throat> Uh, classic uh, HCV cells, other than the very eosinophilic inclusions, uh, they're almost multinucleate, uh, and they have this sort of amphiphilic uh, cytoplasm. We don't see good cytoplasmic inclusions in this particular uh, sample. Let's go on to um, the uh, next slide. Uh, this is a <clears throat> slide taken from the colon, <clears throat> and in fact comes from our patient. And here we see there's ulceration. Uh, there's loss of uh, surface epithelial cells. Uh, if we look at the epithelial cells here, we don't see uh, too much uh, of, uh, in terms of megalic uh, nuclei and so forth. Um, we do see down here in this uh, granulation type tissue, we do see a few of these uh, larger cells with sort of smudgy nuclei. And a suggestion here and an endothelial cell. Uh, that we may have uh, infectious uh, particles. Here's a few more over here, these megalic disease. And this underscores the fact that immunohistochemistry may be very useful. So I said we shouldn't just stop with the diagnosis of uh, CMV and say, okay, we've got ulceration, we've got CMV. Um, but in fact, looking a little further here, um, and uh, guess what? Well, right here, uh, we've got karyorexix, we've got apoptotic changes, uh, we've got indications that there is some graft versus host disease going on here as well. And so finding that in conjunction with CMV, and here you see more of the apoptotic changes, uh, can be very, very important uh, in terms of management because clearly um, that uh, may pay, play an even more important role than the presence of CMV in terms of the patient's recovery and prognosis. So our final sign out today on this case is uh, CMV gastritis, and in fact, CMV enteritis uh, with, uh, in the colon, evidence of uh, graft-versus-host disease. So I hope you've enjoyed that, a little quick view of some CMV gastritis and enteritis, uh, along with a quick peek at uh, graft-versus-host disease. I hope you'll join us again on uh, future videos. Please subscribe so you won't miss those. And uh, as always, if you have comments, please reach out to me via my email or Facebook or Twitter. And uh, if you'd like to study these slides in more detail, uh, look below in the comments. Uh, you'll find uh, the link to the slide presentation so that you can examine the digital slides yourself. Until next time, thanks for joining me.